guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Um, Swiss watch exports were released for the month of January 2021. Super excited that we are continuing the series into the new year. Um, there were some interesting, um, interesting results that were released. Definitely different than what we predicted in our previous um, when we covered the December 2020 results. Um, a couple of things we didn't keep in mind during during that time, but you live and you learn, and you definitely uh, get to I uh, get to go over the results with you. If you are new to this little series that we do, we basically discuss um, the uh, Swiss watch export numbers each month. Uh, go over um, some of the results. We look at things like material price point, the 12 month moving average. We look at regions that really performed well or didn't perform well, um, and then we give predictions what we think the next month is going to look like. Um, so uh, if you are new to this series, that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Um, and so to kind of kick us off, I'll go over the December 2020 results really briefly. Um, December 2020 uh, saw Swiss watch exports um, contract by about negative, by about 2.5% year over year. Um, this was a fairly good result considering, um, considering the fact that uh, you know, 2020 was a pretty rough year for global economies. Um, so negative 2.5 was around what we predicted um, for that month. 12 month moving average was around negative 20% um, year over year. We saw interesting results um, coming in for uh, a price category uh, around 500 to 3000 Swiss francs, where we saw growth by about 20% in uh, value. As the story kind of was for 2020, you saw um, some regions have really great results. Um, China was obviously a uh, an absolute uh, outlier, if you want to call it that. Uh, you know, had really great positive results um, year over year for for December. And I think you know, I think it's mostly how they handled the, the pandemic was kind of what what we thought. Um, our predictions for January of 2020 was actually to have negative three percent growth. Um, we thought that it was kind of a similar story with, you know, we're slowly kind of coming out of this um, this pandemic. Global economies are kind of recovering. That was kind of our thought. Um, but boy, were we wrong. Um, so to go into the, the results for January 2021, um, the um, Swiss watch exports uh, totaled around 1.6 billion Swiss francs, which was actually a change of negative uh, 11%. Something that we didn't consider was the fact that um, uh, January 2020 was actually a fairly good month for, for Swiss watch uh, exports. So there was the negative base effect that kind of affected um, the, the, the contraction that, that happened in January 20, uh, 20, 2021. If you look at it by wristwatches and other products, um, wristwatches declined by about 11% and other products declined by about 18%. So it was really um, across the board, there wasn't, you know, watches and other products kind of um, caused that decline. If you look at the 12 month moving average, it actually went down a little bit. We're, we're, look, we're now you know, right around that negative 24, 23% uh, as a 12 month moving average. And we're probably gonna see that going into, um, I would expect February to have similar results as well as March, where we're gonna see the 12 month moving average probably um, go down a little bit and we would have that negative base effect that would affect those months because the, the pandemic really had an effect on, on Swiss watch exports. Um, kind of March, April, May was really when, when um, everything really, really contracted. Moving on to wristwatches by material. Um, interestingly, the massive decline in steel watches. I think, you know, it must have just been a really hot month. Uh, January 2020, people were just buying a, a lot of steel watches. They declined by about 33% in units and negative 14% in um, um, uh, Swiss francs. But across the board, they were, you know, all the way across uh, the, the materials, were, they were down. Other materials were down by 43% in units. Um, so really, really sharp declines. Gold and steel probably had the best month at negative 4% uh, decline in Swiss francs, negative 7.5% in um, units. Uh, you know, what, what, can, what can you say? You know, I think this was just, it was a great 20, January 2020 was a great year and you know this that really has an effect on on the results that are going to come up over the next couple months going to the uh, price categories this was an interesting one um, so overall uh, we saw that um, you know units sold declined by 33 uh, percent and value declined by 11 percent 
But what's interesting is the over 3000 Swiss franc category um, didn't decline by as much as some of the other price categories. So negative uh, over 3000 Swiss francs declined by 6.8% in units and 4% in value. This was a little bit closer to zero than the other ones where you know, you know, you're looking at uh, negative 42 percent uh, around that negative 30 percent mark where the other price categories i think this again speaks to the fact that people who are who have the money may be buying these watches and and that's probably why this price the, the price category for more expensive watches are are able able to are around closer to zero than the other ones um because they have more disposable income than maybe some some other uh, people and so they are able to to buy these watches um, but similar story, you know, January 2020 was a good month. January 2021, you have a, a really high, high mark to kind of um, compete with. Moving on to the main markets, um, starting off the year, we have a real, real showing in the Asian markets. So of the top six markets, um, you had uh, China, Hong Kong, Japan and Singapore all make the, the top six markets. The US came in second and the United Kingdom was in sixth place. When it came to being, uh, when it came to the main markets, what's astounding to me is that the Chinese market saw a change of almost a, a almost positive sixty percent in in uh, in I guess exports in the millions of Swiss francs coming in at two hundred fifty five million Swiss francs. This is insane, and like the fact that they also take up sixty percent of the market share. Um, it like. If you didn't realize that China is a big watch market, this is a perfect example of that, especially going into a year um, that, 20, that 2021 is. Other markets, you know, Singapore close to 0% change, US negative 11% for this month. Um, yeah, I think this is just, a, again, a testament to the fact that we had such a high, uh, high result for January 2020. And so this month, obviously one year later is gonna be be very different. There were some other um, markets that did have positive results. Uh, Australia was one of them at um, plus 11 percent change between 2020 and 2021. Canada as well, almost uh, almost 10 percent um, change. Kuwait coming in at almost 65 percent um, up, and Bahrain almost 11 percent up. So sprinkles of, of good results throughout there, but you know across the board you're going to see negative results, especially with you know the the overall result of ne um, negative 11 percent. It's that's the overwhelming story that you're going to be looking at. Um, moving on to the regions, um, this is something that we started fairly recently, where we kind of discuss some of the variation within regions. This is kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. The the Oceania region saw a positive change of almost fifteen percent, which I thought was kind of kind of cool. Um, it's not a region that I think is as well known for for uh, watch um, exports um, or I guess watch imports. Um, but to see this, it probably is is a it, it it's cool. It, at least it's positive results within a cloud of negative results. You know. Um, Asia saw a decline of about negative 2.3%. I thought this was maybe a little bit of a, of a, a more, a more uh, holistic view of, of what the pandemic had an effect on in, in 2021. Obviously, 2020 was a really good year. Um, and for the most part, you know, China with over 60% um, increase in their, in their exports, that really tells you the story that they're doing really well. But I think this negative 2% kind of shows, yes, it did actually hit the Asian markets and there is some contraction occurring there as well. The other ones obviously saw contractions as well, America, Africa around 11, around 12% and then Europe negative 27%. This is a, a really rough result for Europe. I think, you know, I think Europe got hit pretty hard with the pandemic. Um, and obviously 2021 is a very different year than 2020 of January, January 2020 was. So that's also something to consider. Looking at the share of the markets, you can obviously see Oceania only 2%. So even though that they had a positive variation in, in their um, uh, total value, their share is still fairly small when it comes to Swiss watch exports. In Asia, almost 60% of total, total exports. So a really, really crazy result there. So moving on to February of 2020, I think it's going to be probably a similar story to January. Um, I think February was still a decent, decent month. I think this was kind of when um, China started having uh, the impact of, of COVID kind of started up around February. And so maybe Chinese results will be a little bit lower, but I think it's going to be a similar story. February of 2020 was a fairly good year for Swiss watch exports and moving into 2021, I think um, 
you know, you're obviously going to have uh, lower results um, than than um, than uh, than 2020. Uh, my predictions for um, for what the actual percentage is going to be, um, I'm actually going to go for about negative nine percent. I think this is for me. I think this was kind of when China um, started to have seeing the impacts of, of of COVID. I think the outbreak kind of started then, and so. With that in mind, and the fact that they're, you know, this last month they were 16% of all watch, watch exports. If their results decline, I think you're going to see um, that has to have an impact on on the February results. So negative nine percent is kind of where I'm where I'm going to land on my predictions, um, and and that's the reasoning. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at the Swiss watch exports for January 2021. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything that stood out to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe if you like videos about watches. We literally do videos about any topic that you can think of. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell, bell icon so you're notified when we, when we are upload. And also, if you did not do in the beginning of the video, if you wouldn't mind smashing the like button for us, it really does help us out and it gets these videos into the YouTube algorithm and into more watch enthusiasts, which is, is exactly what we want to do. We'd love to grow the Life on the Rest family. And with this said, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.